there are some stories we make straight for ott and there are some you know we feel that they are better if they go to the theater first so that the experience yeah. watching those films there would be far better than on a television that way the idea as a producer always is to tell the story to as wide an audience as possible The last five six week we had a great run from Mission Impossible to Barbie to Oppenheimer yeah. to Rocky or Rani, now Gadar, OMG, Jailer. So all these films they'll bring back the audience and then again slowly from the same audience you'll start getting you know more audiences for the films the smaller uh, size film. For example, a film like Kennedy, it goes to film festivals instead of directly taking the route where you guys go directly for a release. What would be the possible benefit of taking a film to festivals as opposed to releasing it directly? Kennedy is one film where from the story, from what we were making, we were clear with our studio Z, they were also very clear that this is a film which should be showcased at a festival first. Right. What it does, like you uh, asked, and like I just said that, you know, a lot of people get interested in it. A lot of critics get interested in it. People who are outside India, they know about the film. Film, they talk about it they write and there is a certain positioning which happens for the film that's the big best benefit of taking a film to festivals hi ranjan thank you so much for joining me you. on humundo cinema it's such a pleasure i mean i i have wanted to uh, sit with you for a while i uh, you know i've been following your work um, and uh, as just aspiring filmmakers I, as people who want to make films as people who want to be be in cinema um, i think one of the biggest uh, one of the biggest things that we at least from a distance, uh, seems maybe the most intimidating is the idea of it, is production. I mean, I, of course, um, now uh, more than before, I'm more closely connected to people, so I do understand it a little bit more, but I still feel like it is something that, you know, the rules keep on changing every day. <laughs> the, it's just that kind of thing. And uh, I, I would love to, you know, just uh, today try to understand it better from you, um, you know, as somebody, especially with Kennedy coming soon and uh, with all the festival round that you're doing. Um, first of all, like how has it been, like the journey of Kennedy just uh, in the past few months? Right. So, Kennedy has been, uh, I think, very special for us. Uh, it's right from the scripting stage when Anurag just one day said, I've sent you guys a script. There's a bunch of people, you know, who read it first. And from then on, and one of the best things about Kennedy is uh, that most of the script, you know, which is rare with Anurag script, is has, is there in the film from the first draft. So normally he keeps improvising, but the right. script was very close. It came from within, and uh, and now we have been able to make it. And uh, also, with the film is traveling, starting with Cannes, um, it has went to a bunch of festivals. I think uh, New Shuttle, New Sydney, Be Fan right now. It's at Melbourne, yeah. and there are another six, seven. There is Fantastic Fest. There is uh, IFSA. A lot of them coming up. So the journey as we intended for this story to go global uh, and most people outside the country also see it uh, and then you know so that because the story probably will resonate with everyone hmm. and eventually we want the film to come back here and most hopefully this year Mami we get selected and then we play as the last festival and then we are going to put it out after that. Well, that has been the journey of Kennedy, uh, very satisfying, very yeah. Uh, happy with it, uh, with Anurag, Rahul, Sunny, Kabir, uh, who's there. We have made Z has been a great partner. Yes, they've they've supported the film in the best possible way. Uh, they were the first guys who read the script and loved it, and since then, you know, they've been really a big support. So, Kennedy's has been like a flawless journey till now. So very happy. And do you guys have like a timeline in mind for when you want to release it? Yeah, by this year end is when by this year end. Yeah, it's going to be theater release, of course. Yes. We are hoping for that. <laughs> but in the time, mein, you know, with the, I mean, the theatre landscape changing so rapidly, uh, the theatre OTT, uh, you know, dynamic, uh, of course, that is something that I'm sure that producers, the uh, first thing that you guys have to think yeah. about. Um, so, what are some factors that in today's time you guys have to look at in order to make that decision? See, uh, not many. Actually, if you look at the story that you're trying to tell or the film that you're trying to make, uh, it, everything kind of works around the budget, right? So if you can come up with the right budget for a story that you're trying to tell, then it becomes easier for it to you know get exploited. Now, there are certain things that uh, you want to decide in advance. There are some things you leave them after the film is made, right? Hmm. Uh, so as producers here, at least we approach the film with 
we make it we see it you know that yes there will be a couple of films where we know in the beginning only that this is a great fit for ott correct uh, because of a certain uh, a certain section of the audience which is easier to reach out to an ott platform uh, however most of the films that we would love as filmmakers to be first put out on theaters hmm. but then you know theaters uh, availability exhibition there are a lot of factors now you know is there a window because there's a Uh, since lockdown there's there's a heavy rush of films you know it's it's almost a year now but you still see on a friday there are two three releases happening yeah so those kind of things are there and of course uh, you know there are other factors like you know if uh, if you're planning a release then you have to see what are the other releases happening in that uh, in that yeah. week or in that fortnight and stuff so yeah so to answer the question yes there are some stories we feel uh, you know we make straight for ott uh and there is some you know we feel that you know they are better you know if they go to the theater first so that the experience mm. watching those films there would be far better than uh you know uh on a on a on a television that way mm. so that is broadly the approach rest uh, rest i think you know once the studio comes in the partners come in they also then brainstorm and that's mm. how the decision is taken अभी लेकिन कुछ टाइम से ये भी हो रहा है ना कि आई थिंक फॉर अ लॉट ऑफ फिल्म्स द डिसीजन इज मेड आफ्टर द फिल्म हैज बीन मेड अबाउट यस सो दैट्स व्हाट आई जस्ट सेड कि देयर आर सर्टेन फैक्टर्स यू थिंक इन बिफोर एंड देयर आर सर्टेन यू नो थिंग्स व्हिच यू वांट सो द फिल्म इज मेड सी देयर आर अ लॉट ऑफ एक्टर्स यू नो हु हु आर डूइंग सो ग्रेट ऑन ओटीटी यू नो या या एंड दे हैव अ ग्रेट मार्केट एंड अ ग्रेट ऑडियंस यू नो व्हिच ऑडियंस सेट व्हिच इज वाचिंग देयर फिल्म्स एंड show yeah. and stuff so at times probably it makes sense you know if hmm. if that particular actor is doing so well on ott why not yeah. you know because the idea as a producer always is to tell the story to as wide an audience as possible hmm. so in the past few months i think the or maybe at least uh, maybe even a year i think the most interesting that thing that has happened is that now especially abhi to hum log bilkul us wale weekend ke baad baithe hue hain jo ki which has been the yes. biggest weekend of hindi cinema okay. but still like the the particular genre of films that is still like doing these big numbers it's it still belongs to a very particular type of cinema you know um and it almost feels like and on the other hand there have been some really good content driven films like bheed or um, or you know even almost pair with dj mohabbat which i loved personally uh and but at the same time these 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 are films that are good films yeah. but you know and they were content driven by really good filmmakers but they aren't really doing the kind of numbers that you know these yeah, films were doing before yeah, also yes so that's correct like you said you know there was a certain uh, cinema going behavior before the lockdown yeah uh, in fact i think smaller films made chance you know after the multiplexes came and because i was there at that time you know when pvr and i know and i think they had a great run till till uh, uh, till a lot of time you know and if you yeah. see before locked down a lot of good films which are considered smaller budget and stuff they were doing very well i remember thappad was in february 2020 yeah, yeah. Uh, even shubh mangal zyada savdhan they were the films just before the lockdown ekdam yeah yeah correct now what has happened also is with the lockdown a lot of cinema going behavior has changed yeah. you know also i feel there's a lot of financial stress on a lot of cinema going audience you know because the lockdown was not easy you know there a lot of people you know the money salaries a lot of those things are factors but like every time there is a uh, you know if cinema going is cyclical these kind of uh, phases have come a lot more times you know hmm. so now and they are obvi- you are right that they obviously the cinema going audience first goes for the big films Correct. and that's how it is so and you see like in the last 5 6 week we had a great run from mission impossible to barbie to oppenheimer yeah. to rocky or rani now gadar omg jailer so all these films will definitely that's what i believe they'll bring back the audience and then again slowly from the same audience you'll start getting you know more audiences for the films the smaller uh, size films yeah. and i'm pretty sure we'll be back there soon yeah. so that's what i feel uh, you know we are right yeah. now in that phase i think that there is this very interesting dichotomy right now in the indian audience where there's a film like openheimer of course you know uh, it it sells because of nolan's name in the first place but at the same time you know openheimer is also so different from all of his other films right i mean it is more focused on the writing you know there aren't really a lot of i mean people i think a lot of people went in with the expectation ki mulai bada explosion scene dekhne ko milega aur you know like i think that was the idea especially usne itna 
ध्यान दिया इस चीज़ पे कि आई मैक्स पे बनाई है मैंने और ये सब किया है एंड यू हैव टू सी इट इन अ पर्टिकुलर फॉर्मेट एंड देन पीपल वेंट एंड रियलाइज दैट वॉज एंट रियली अबाउट लाइक द विजुअल एक्सपीरियंस एज मच यू नो इट वॉज मोर अबाउट द राइटिंग सो एंड एट द सेम टाइम डिस्पाइट ऑफ ऑल ऑफ दैट पीपल हैव लव दैट फिल्म इट हैज़ डन ग्रेट नंबर्स इन इंडिया सो एज प्रोड्यूसर्स वैन यू सी लाइक अ फिल्म लाइक ओपन हाइमर डूइंग सच ग्रेट नंबर्स यू नो इवन दो इट इज ऐसा नहीं है कि मार्बल या फिर वैसी वाली फिल्म है वो बट एट द सेम टाइम मे बी इफ अ सिमिलर फिल्म वॉज मेड इन इंडिया डू डू यू थिंक अबाउट दैट लाइक इफ अ सिमिलर फिल्म वॉज मेड इन इंडिया बाय एन इंडियन मेकर इन द सेम एग्जैक्ट वे दे वॉज अ पॉसिबिलिटी दैट इट वुडेंट रियली डू द सेम नंबर्स I don't See, know what making sense. numbers absolute numbers are obviously uh, difficult because that is a worldwide release and Indian film still doesn't yeah. go as worldwide. Also there big no, thing I'm is just talking about the business in India. Right. So I I, I don't see any uh, reason for a good film like that to be made and uh, like you said you know it's also known and there's a huge legacy. So if there's a filmmaker who has a legacy uh, whose films people have like why not you know that kind mm. of business it's easy. Uh, like I said, Rocky or Rani, everybody's love it. Everybody's been calling it the most non-current horror film. But there's a lot of current horror legacy also, right? Yeah. And that's what makes it more fun. That you Correct. know now it's saying, "Are it the most non-dharma film?" But that yeah. also means you want to watch the the mm. uh, so-called dharma film. Yeah. Changing also. So I think the legacy works. And if there's a filmmaker and if it's a, as good a film, I don't mm. see any reason for it not to do the same. Number. Yeah. I think India has one thing to say. There are many directors. So many are not there. Who लोग उस तरीके से फॉलो करेंगे आई थिंक यू नो दैट्स ट्रू या सी इफ यू गो बैक एंड सी वेरी फ्यू डायरेक्टर्स यूज टू गेट एज मच मेंशन इन यू नो इन 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 द प्रेस इन द लाइक आई थिंक इट इज एक्चुअली इफ यू आस्क मी करण जोर्ज इन माय नॉलेज यू नो ही वाज द वन गाय हु रियली करेक्ट यूज्ड टू बी आउट देयर टॉकिंग अबाउट डायरेक्शन देन अनुराग एंड अ लॉट ऑफ अदर एंड देन आई थिंक द लास्ट 20 22 डेकेड्स और समथिंग अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल हैव नॉट बीन इंटरेस्टेड अबाउट डायरेक्टर्स अर्लियर I mean, it still is about a lot about stars and who's headlining the film. But now, at least there is an audience who wants to know who's the director, right? And people do take some, even say a smaller factor, but do take a cinema-going decision based on who's the director and his past work yeah. or her past work. That way. Yeah. So I think that's increasing, uh, and yeah, and that's probably the reason we don't have uh, uh, directors, you know, with a long legacy. So hmm. it's also. you know once they will be mentioned more if the discourse of yeah. filmmaking in in india will get into more wider we'll talk about the director's role writer's role for that matter you know and other crew also yeah. that's how it'll increase yeah is, yeah is what i feel okay so now talking specifically about production especially for people who want to be producers i think that is also i think uh, there's a big gap there where i don't think a lot of people aspire to be producers Yeah. you know because i think there is still this um, understanding that production means putting in money yes right <laughs> so yes. so if you just had to kind of um, introduce people to production and tell them what exactly a producer does on sure. a film so i'll just take a small minute here also see production sure. is a specific task while producing is slightly more than Correct. that you know producing also begins much before then actual production begins you know So yeah so as a producer no producing producer is a job you know and uh, you don't really necessarily need money to be you can do it uh, for a studio you can do it for a financer who's ready to fund your film ideally a producer is somebody who will get a script or probably look for a script then the second thing would be to get a director and then from there his job becomes to raise funds to yeah. ensure uh, you know a proper shoot is done the director is happy with what he's doing the director you know is gets what he's he or she wants to you know make the film complete the shoot do the entire post uh, market release make sure all the revenue collection is done and eventually the money which has come from either say a funding institution or a studio or a f- individual financer you know he gets it back and ideally with a profit yeah so that's the entire gamut of services what a producer does Yeah. now like i said it could be a part, he could be a part of a studio he could do it on his own uh, or probably do it for a production company hmm. so that that is the kind of full role for like you said for anybody outside to understand what does a producer exactly yeah mean. yeah i think um, most of the people when they start out um, on their production journey uh, i think for most people it starts with like a short film yes. you know they they think about producing a short film 
but uh, right now in india i think this is a global problem in fact that uh, there aren't really a lot of distribution channels for short yeah. films yes. um so what would you uh, tell people like that when because especially because of course whenever somebody sets out to produce a film of course they do they are concerned about the fact that whether or not it will make money do you think that in today's time there is a possibility of making money through short films oh it depends so short films have we are also been trying to make a full economic model out of it yeah. there are times where this still not if you ask me at least at least i don't know about anything uh, which is a regular thing in india there are times hmm. where ott platforms have gone and bought short films and if you're lucky with a short film which is ready and they like it then it gets picked up Hmm. uh there are some other uh, uh, curated channels on youtube who at times buy yeah. you know uh, they also do some kind of a revenue share and stuff yeah. uh there are times where you have been put together like in 2015 i put together an anthology uh, called char cutting of four short films and yeah. we were able to release it in theaters also and then correct. put it out so on on tvf play uh, if i remember correctly right so you have to keep trying right now yes there is no model but there are different different avenues where you are hmm. but the i think for a short film it's important that most more and more people see it and yeah. if it's able to recover its money then then it, that's the best hmm. so yeah it's right now there's uh, no such model but like i said also as a producer your job is to make it and try and ensure you know how to exploit it so that's what the producer yeah. is all about doing so yeah. maybe today there's no but right now as we are talking maybe there is somebody who's try, planning to put together a model or come up with a platform for short films you know yeah. so as a producer you will keep looking for avenues to exploit your film or you know yeah. the other part to take your film to a wider audience now in my journey i've done a lo- lot of different things like we've also had public screenings you know for one of the shorts that i hmm. produced so we tied up with uh, this to be moka cafe that day correct and cyrus took the took the shot to so many cities in fact and they would hmm. screen the film in the cafes and stuff a lot of people so but today now i look back and see now i don't think that's happening but maybe something else probably online a lot of people are watching so that keeps changing hmm. and as a producer you have to keep looking for newer things hmm. so shorts yes there's no fixed revenue model yet i feel but there are other ways that you try and you know uh, recover it hmm. at what point because uh, i mean uh, i like again from a distance i'm just trying to understand uh, for example a film like kennedy you know um it goes to film festivals instead of directly taking the route where you know let's say they they you guys go directly for a release um so what what affects that decision like in terms of how does a producer think about whether they want to take films to film festivals and what would be the possible benefit of taking a film to festivals as opposed to releasing it directly see if you if you, i mean it's a great uh, question which is the an answer like today you're talking about kennedy because kennedy went to a certain festivals correct so you know about it a lot of film buffs know about it again when you do marketing uh, you know marketing first the communication is target to a certain target audience right you never go looking for everyone you right. want a certain segment to know first then they talk and that's how the communication pyramid works so kennedy is one film where from the story from the from the from what we were making we were clear with our studio z they were also very clear that this is a film which should be showcased at a festival first right what it does like uh, us and like i just said that you know a lot of people get interested in it a lot of critics get interested in it uh, a lot of people who are outside india Hmm. they know about the film they talk about it they write and there is a certain then uh, positioning which happens for the film right right so that also helps now maybe uh, versus suppose like you said if you would have straight away wanted to do say a release and there would be a marketing campaign hmm. how do you tell uh, that you know this film is probably different you know so right. a festival strategy is very helpful for yeah. you know films that want to reach out to a wider audience yeah. you know and also to form the correct communication pyramid so today we get a lot of queries when is kennedy releasing you know correct and we know that these guys are the you know most probably the discerning audience that we have hmm. you know and that's why they are following the journey they know which are the films from india who are playing out there so there is a certain positioning which happens hmm. you know so it's great to have the right audience come in first so hmm. that when they see the film they know you know what they were coming in for is the film like that Hmm. so that's the big best benefit of taking a film to festivals 
इंटरनेशनल इंटरनेशनली भी फिल्म को लेके जाने में हेल्प होती है इन टर्म्स ऑफ एब्सोलूट इसी लाइक से द फेस्टिवल लाइक कैन यू नो ऑलमोस्ट एवरी बायर और एवरी प्लेटफॉर्म इज देयर करेक्ट एंड देर आर सो मेनी चांसेस दैट यू माइट ओपन अप अ न्यू मार्केट समबडी फ्रॉम देयर इज देयर यू स्क्रीन योर फिल्म एट द मार्केट स्क्रीनिंग एंड इंडियन सिनेमा यू नो देयर गोज ऑलमोस्ट एवरी वेयर यू नो देयर आर देयर आर शोज देयर आर फिल्म्स व्हिच आर पिक्ड अप फॉर इवन साउथ अमेरिका यू नो अर्जेंटीना एंड देयर आर यू नो मालगुडी डेज आई रिमेंबर कपल ऑफ इयर्स बैक वाज आल्सो बीइंग प्लेइंग समवेयर इन डेनमार्क नाउ सो द फेस्टिवल नो नो आई नो प्रॉपर चल समबडी पिक्ड इट अप फ्रॉम समवेयर सो दैट्स हाउ द एक्सपोजर हैपेंस यू नो लाइक इंडिया वन ऑफ द बेस्ट स्टोरीज सक्सेस स्टोरीज इन द लास्ट इज लंच बॉक्स यू नो इट प्लेड एट कैन एंड पिक्ड अप बाय सोनी एंड देन the rest everything is history so of course there's a huge huge chance you know you go there that's one for the for that particular film second as a filmmaker you are also seen there right so there are a lot of other exposures you get you get to see how the other right. filmmakers are how their films are you know there hmm. are different cultural so maybe next time you are going to apply for a grant for a co production or something they'll know that oh this guy's film was there at the festival you know right. so that helps right that's another way you know uh to help you so that's another benefit of going to festivals hmm. third of course you can't really measure it but then you meet you see so many films there of different countries their culture like correct you meet so many different filmmakers yes yeah. and then you learn so many things like uh, one thing that i learned this time was you know so there was this korean film and uh, the the main actor was there and there were other two also actors in can that time okay and it was amazing to see that all of them had come to support that film and they were there to welcome the guests okay before the screening they were uh, actors yeah, in the film they were the entrance yeah one of them was the main actor the other two had different films but they had come to support this wow. guy wow and then they made videos and if you go and check out instagram it was really cool video so suddenly you see oh wow this we could have also done probably request other indian filmmakers or other yeah. actors there so let's come together do it yeah right so these are things you learn you know you see and you learn and you realize that you know these are things also to help you know make your film reach to a wider audience hmm. so but, but these are some of the benefits yeah uh, but is there a fear when you taking films to so many festivals is there a fear that there could be a disadvantage uh, with respect to uh, having such a long gap uh, because it's doing the festival rounds but the film is made so just i don't know uh, at least uh, i don't think so so this, this might happen for different films for for a film where you know that it really is being invited at a lot of good festivals and you know that you know it's getting a lot of good press and the exposure hmm. i don't see so see strategies change with every film hmm. you know there are some films yes you would want to make put it out there you know hmm. depending upon you know for example if suppose you were telling a certain story and you know that probably there are two three other films also being made similar or it probably you know the story that you're telling is maybe slightly more generic in nature or whatever so hmm. then you would want to make it release it hmm. but depending upon the film like when you know you know the story that i'm telling is pretty unique and pretty good and you're very satisfied with the way it has been made hmm. and if it is being invited by a lot of good festivals you would want to do that because at the beginning you wanted this story to go to a lot more people hmm. right so it works differently uh, at least for kennedy we don't have that fear that hmm. will will get uh, overexposed or something like that So. Okay okay um in today's time because i remember i was seeing this interview with matt demon and he uh, very smartly explained how uh, how the distribution model has changed over the years and how earlier it was very hard for a film to lose money on the other hand because there were so many channels because there was the home release there was the dvd release of course the theater release and just by doing all of that even if the film wasn't making money in theaters it was still making profit even if the film would flop at the theaters versus now he was uh, talking about how that has changed because of the uh, because of the ott mm. uh you know format and so how much of that is true for india like is it now in india was was it really the case that earlier films were it was difficult for them to lose money no i think it's losing money as a uh aspect is almost the same earlier there were more avenues but then those have changed into something right so home video is gone but then ott has come earlier there was home video as a as a another revenue stream no but earlier there were two different uh, avenues right one was home video and then there was tv 
No, no, that, that way the rights are more than 30 technically for a film. Right. We in India, I think mostly 7 to 10, 12 rights are being exploited, which also includes aeroplane, technically right. routes, uh, you know, these liners across. So I said there are thir- more than 30 rights. Correct, correct, uh, correct. We don't really, you know, there are dubbing, there's this, there are other stuff, you know, even the buses which ply between cities, they also play those films. So, wow. yeah, ideally you should be compensated for it, that, yeah. that's paid. But, but you don't get compensated for it, because uh, I was actually wondering from my flight this time. Yeah, no, 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 aeroplane are properly sold, right. you know? uh, all, the, all the big, where, you know, big brands and all that, that's for their, uh, for sure. Correct. But, uh, so answering, so there was, there was theatrical, there was satellite, there was home video, then there were ancillary rights, as we would call them, which would include an aeroplane and other rights and stuff. Uh, also remake, also say a certain television, say a foreign language television in right. Southeast Asia, Correct. they would want it, dub it, stuff like that. So, so the broader question that was it easier to make money earlier or now? No, I think it's almost the same. What has probably okay. happened is it's now become difficult to get audience to theatres. So that's an important chunk. And see for smaller films, you know, it's not just about the theatrical revenue. A theatrical release also works with a great marketing because your film gets the visibility. You know, the reviews are out, most people discuss it, you know, stuff like that. So, which can actually help the film when it releases back on, say, an OTT or a satellite. Hmm. Because now you know about the film. You yeah. know, so even if you don't, say, make much money of the theatrical, but at least your film is now visible, which yeah. is very important for a smaller film. Yeah. So, so yeah, so I, that's the answer. I, I think there are still very, but the, the avenues have changed. But the risk part of making money on I think is the same. So. <laughs> okay, okay. You, you were saying we, before we started that uh, you think that filmmaking is almost like gambling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do feel so. I think, you know, it's pretty, it's nature of the risk involved is definitely uh, almost like gambling, you know, because there are times you believe in something, you believe in, and you think, you know, and you fully think that, you know, this is going to be liked by the audience. Mm. But uh, something happens. And, yeah. And by, in the last, whatever, experience-wise, in the last two decades, we have uh, some of the reasons, I won't take the name of the film, but some of the reasons which have not, some of the films which have not worked, and a lot of research has later on been told to us also, you know, by uh, by studios or by distributors who have released. We have been also told weird reasons like, you know, the the hair, hair uh, hairstyle of the hero didn't work. Wow. There are times where a film's title didn't work, you know. Yeah, and uh, and that that has come from research. You have to believe it. I know? mean, the title thing I can totally yes, understand, though. Yeah, yeah but uh, we had a film where one of the major reasons of people not going to watch that film was because the guy's hair was didn't work. So that's yeah. why I think gambling. Jabu, once the film flops, and that is when you realize that oh, there could be so many reasons, and mm. uh, you learn, you live and learn, you accept, move on, mm. do things. That's why I feel the the nature of the risk is. Pretty close to gambling. Hmm. Kya chalega? Like also, I think in a way, I think Godard says also what will work on a Friday, nobody knows. So yeah, yeah. it's the same thing I'm saying that it's yeah. like gambling. I think I mean, well, you you mentioned Godard. You know, whenever I see like films from the French New Wave, um, especially the films of, for example, somebody like Agnes Varda, who used to just pick up a camera and just record everything around her, even herself in the in the mirror. Yeah. And uh, that was a film. And I mean, if you think about it, like it's the budget is almost next to nothing, yeah. right? Yeah. So she takes a film like that to festivals. You know, it, it obviously it's yeah. Agnes Varda. It gets selected. It shows. Same goes for Panahi. Something yeah. like Panahi. You know, he was making a film yeah. out of his house <laughs> while he was in house arrest. Yeah. That film went to Cannes. So I mean, of course, I know that this is not something that can work for everyone. Yeah. But uh, but but do you think that? Some like that is maybe the kind of format that more filmmakers today need to explore when they're starting out in terms of something that they can make with just as less of a budget as possible, uh, and you know, and just experiment with the format uh, so that if you know there is a possibility of it getting picked yeah. up. See, what well, the examples that have given were basically innovations. Yeah. Uh, even for and we this time we went to see her house. Me and my wife, uh, Agnes Varda's really? house. Yeah, yeah. Oh. We have a lovely uh, small museum kind of a thing there. Right. Okay. So both the solutions had come out because there were no resources. You know, she was not given the resources that she wanted, and slowly that's why she picked up and she said, "I'll go for okay. it and make my own films." Hmm. And that's how she made her place. So 
the answer for younger film is budget yes absolutely always important especially when you are uh, starting out always and try and ensure that it can be made in the least possible budget because it's somebody's money you know and uh, if that person has trusted you with it then it's your job to definitely ensure that one it is used in the best possible way and two if it's possible earn and give it back hmm. that's one that's on the moral thing the two other part is you know that if you develop a skill of shooting or making a film in less money it's a great skill to have later on in life you know when you become a professional because right. see like i said you know filmmaking requires some 30 or 50 or factors to you know come together but when you become a filmmaker like that who has always worked with limited resources and still worked out with a lot of good results come out with a good results then it's a great skill that you have then you are not uh, dependent on a lot of other factors so that's what is the main thing you know ultimately hmm. you will learn to make and third of course is as they say you know when there are limited resources that's when magic happens you know because you're forced to think solutions yeah so some of the best filmmakers when they talk about their films and their scenes you'll realize that yeah. most of it was a solution yeah yeah you know because they had no other choice and vaise pur ki to puri making uske bare mein of course vaise pur us completely just that even black fred i think that scene of the chase yeah. in and Uh, apparently they kept the camera in the back of a maruti van because they didn't have permission or something they just shot the chase yeah that was a solution yeah so that's the whole thing if you start early from you then then you're going to be a great filmmaker at least you know who will yeah. not depend on a lot of resources yeah so that's a great thing you spoke about permissions i think permissions is also a very interesting <laughs> topic i think <laughs> you know because uh, i think a lot of people don't realize how big of a challenge that is while making a film See permissions. If they, if there's time and money, then then it's easy. Then it's not a problem. You know, it all depends upon how much time do you have. And uh, uh, one, of course, is the imagination of the filmmaker. That what what is that you want? And if you have time and money, then you can do. It's it's not a problem. Yeah. Uh, but most of the times, as you know, we know if if you are making films with limited resources, you will be short on both the things. You know, mm. you'll probably get very little time from say the actor or whatever, and you can't. Hold it more, so you want to come up with solutions, and of course, money is always less if yeah you know you're making a certain kind of movie. Correct, and stuff. correct. So, so yeah, but in normal case, if uh, if you have time and money, permissions are yeah. uh, that way. I think we are pretty cool that way. You know, permissions the way we shoot here. As in in India, you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So okay, okay. of course, there's. other issues you know like you know we are a heavily populated country and those kind of crowd management becomes an issue right uh, other things you know uh, uh, in terms of function you know arranging stuff at that particular location hmm. those are the logistical issues, issues. logistics issues become those hmm. are bigger issues at times and all but but yeah like i said if you have time and money you can manage most of the stuff right वो वर्नर हर्जॉक तो बात काफ़ी बात करते हैं ना इस चीज़ के बारे में परमिशन के बारे में वो तो अपने फिल्म स्कूल में पढ़ाते ही यही है कि परमिशन वगैरह के लिए इट्स इट्स ऑलमोस्ट लाइक एन आर्ट राइट टू गेट थिंग्स डन यस बट आल्सो यू नो सी दोज कंडीशंस आर डिफरेंट हाँ ट्रूडन टाइम और फेज इन इन अ फिल्म मेकर्स जर्नी यू नो द सेम थिंग आफ्टर ट्वेंटी ईयर्स बिकम्स अट डिफरेंट यू नो यू कैड डू सर्टन थिंग्स वेन यूर यंगर एंड you know uh, when you have a lot of energy and stuff probably you know as you grow old you also require a certain amount of you know padding or not some certain amount of resource also stories change you know you want to once you have also done see because at the end of the day you are an artist right so you also want to keep doing new things so if you've done a certain thing a certain way maybe you want to do the same thing or a different thing in a different way correct right so so yeah conditions matter a lot so what hopefully someday you know we should also be there like he says yeah <laughs> how did you get started on your journey um, in the industry so i as long as i remember i mean of course i was interested in movies and stuff uh, hmm. and uh, after my mba i had joined advertising okay. because that probably that time seemed like i was very clear what i don't want to do hmm. i because a lot of campus placements and stuff and i realized that which were mostly for financial institutions and pharma companies and stuff like that i can't probably do that it was not as interesting for me so i joined advertising right and at when i joined advertising is when i really started to understand also to to be honest i knew that okay now there are possibilities to make a career in films otherwise where i came from there was very little mm. exposure this is also pre google days pre uh, google days 
Yeah, 99 I'm talking when Correct. I was doing my MBA. And so, and also, you know, from the background that I come, it's pretty humble. I didn't know nobody in my family had ever right. even thought of working in films. And so you always didn't know. But when I joined advertising and when I moved to Bombay is when you realize, oh, you can actually have a career in films. That's how, and we were pitching for uh, an account with Inox. Inox had just started in 2002. So, uh, while talking and everything, and I got really interested, and I moved to Inox and jo joined Inox. Once I joined Inox, is then you start understanding fully, okay, exhibition is different, distribution is different, producing is different, direction is different. And that's how then I started working my way up. Like, so, I, I'm, my career has been coming the opposite way. I have first run theatres, then distributed films, then now back okay. to making films. So, okay. the entire pipeline. Okay. So, okay. I had worked with Inox, then I worked with PVR, then I was independent as a distributor and a producer. Then Phantom happened. Right. And after that, this. So. And then Phantom you were working as? I started working as a marketing head and then also I was the associate producer on all the films. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So, it's like I said, you work your way up, you do start doing a lot of other things. Hmm. Uh, and if those are working with the directors and producers, you know, you start taking part somewhere in, you know, music, promotional stuff, slowly, you know. Hmm. That's how uh, I got into it. Started getting a lot into some bit of post, understanding that, doing something. Hmm. So, one by one you start getting into every department. Right. What is your opinion on just the kind of, uh, just the way in which marketing is approached in India, the marketing of films is approached in India? See, my opinion, I'll say, I personally think, I mean, you know, maybe we're doing very good. The good thing is it's gradually getting better. And if you genuinely, uh, if I have to say, I think it's just about 15, 18 years where, you know, films are really thinking about marketing seriously here. You Correct. Know? I think before that was pretty much put out the poster, put out the trailer, put out the songs on radio on, and on television and that's about it. Hmm. So the marketing strategy is slowly, slowly, you know, and earlier it, uh, uh, I think with Mukta, with UTV in the last decade, in the first decade of the millennium, a lot of those things were happening, you know, people started thinking, you know, how to do your marketing better, more unique, there were city visits, there were events. Finally, you know, theatrical publicity also, which according to me is one of the best uh, and very underutilized. Uh, uh, as in, as in theatrical publicity, as in? So, see, uh, what happens is most of the theatre goers hmm. are repeat goers, you know. Right. People who love watching movies there. So, hmm. what best then to market to those people hmm. who already love watching movies there, right? So, theatrical publicity, if you see, Hollywood does it very good. You know the amount of standees, the kind of publicity they put up, the mm. uh, uh, the the installations at times what they do, mm. they are very good. Mm. Also, you know the way they the trailers and everything, branding on other like popcorn stuff like that. So that I feel is underutilized by uh, by the Indian film uh, industry marketing. Okay, okay. But okay. I think we can really do better. But overall, right. it's really getting better. Uh, I think. Recently, I think Gadar was an amazing campaign. The really? Way they, yeah, yeah. The way they really didn't have a false note, which I think is a great thing for a film sequel after 20 years, which is playing on nostalgia, you know, because normally things that old or, you know, memories that old might, you know, there is a tendency that if you put out something else, you know, it, the audience might take it like a spoof. Hmm. But they had everything correct. They first released the first film. Then, you know, yeah. the song and then slowly one by one the way things and so maybe... Uh, you expected that the film will Yes, yes, I can show you my message, you can ask my team. <laughs> in July, I had uh, bets. Achha. In fact, with the, the say, their own marketing name, I had bets. Oh. Uh, so, so close on numbers. So, wow. it was always there because the campaign was going absolutely flawless. They were adding small, small things. They were adding like, you know... The other good thing they are right now doing is they are doing post-release publicity. Uh, you know, the actors yesterday, day before were in Hyderabad, today they are travelling, now they are going to Dubai, which is great. Hmm. You know, so that is one great campaign I feel in recent times uh, they did. Is, so, is there data about, is there any data about the correlation of actors doing, for example, actors have been going to colleges, um, you know, while promoting their films, actors have been going uh, and dancing on reels with uh, different influencers. Is there any data <laughs> to correlate whether those things translate into success? Or I thing? don't know if there is. Uh, Ormax is the right agency probably. They might be of course trying to do something. 
I personally don't know as of now is there something available, but I'm sure there are other things they map, you know, your your social media or your online promotions and the impact and the conversions and stuff like that. Hmm. So that definitely is there. Okay. And uh, I'm I don't know, but I'm pretty sure somebody would be working on this, you know, to map that. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, I I've been listening to this podcast. It's it's you know it's completely it's based in hollywood and it's completely about like indie filmmakers and how to get started etc of course a lot of things do not really uh, translate yeah. exactly well for india but one of the things uh, that i found very interesting that they were talking about matlab wo bol rahe the ki agar aapko if you want to be a filmmaker even if, if you, even if you want to be a producer all you have to do is ki aap apne ghar pe chahe apne bas phone cameras ko leke you start making films at zero budget theek hai matlab aap bas chahe khud ko shoot karna start kar do akele single crew don't do anything else make one film like that release it on youtube you have one film to your credit you start doing that again and again you make like five films 10 films and you will have a body of work and you can call yourself a producer and that and then you can maybe show that body of work at different places of course you would have improved by the 10th film etc and like he was talking about it like that and he was like a producer from the industry do you think that it do you, do you really think that that's how it works that's how easy it is if somebody wants to start out today see that is definitely one of the ways to do one it. of the ways uh, you know now depending upon what actually you are making uh, see one thing you'll definitely learn is the technique correct you will shoot with one camera then you shoot with two cameras if you're shooting flat then you'll shoot wide you will definitely keep learning new things right correct. which which will be a part of you you will learn like from as basic say as a tripod lensing everything right so learning definitely happens hmm. if you want to work in films now what is the content coming up is it uh, you know if you can put together something good and nice and if it's being you know if you can show it at a certain place so for sure you are now also understanding the entire process if you show it say to a group of people then you'll also slowly you're learning the part of you know how people react to certain things hmm. so learning definitely there and this is definitely one of the parts but there are a lot of other ways also hmm. so like depends where you are what are your resources what are what is the thing available to you hmm. uh, that's how you should choose there are other ways also go join a production company start as early you start you know like start doing production start as a unit production manager go upwards slowly start reading request get into the reading side get into mm. scripts everything so there are multiple ways the mm. kids like i said remains for a producer is doing how you do it uh, there could be so many ways if the results are coming which mm. we say if the film is taken to an audience if it recovers money and with a the profit then you have done your job yeah so that's all it is okay ranjan on an ending note um I would love to know, uh, like, what are some films that have impacted you over the years? Um, like, just starting from when you were a kid, what kind of films were you oh. watching? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Wo, you know, it's quite funny because tab na kuch, ऐसा वो होता नहीं था censorship type. We used to, I started watching films uh, at the at the army uh, right, right. weekly. उनका एक होता था, जहाँ सब families जाके देखते थे. Unfortunately, my dad never used to come, so there was no. There was no filter type. So, जो चल रहे हम जाके देख लेते थे We were okay. three brothers. There were at times films, you know, which are adult films also. But and you don't know how it. But hmm. now you realize that it might have impacted you. There were violent films and stuff like that. Oh. Yeah. Like उस दमाने में तो कुछ भी हो रहा है. Right, right, right. So, right. so impact wise, if I remember it correctly, Teza was one film I remember. Okay. Uh, I really liked it. and i uh, and that time i was say what 10 years old or something right then uh, then there was maine pyar kiya uh, acha maine pyar kiya was influential yeah yeah i influential as in yeah impact definitely because i went and watched it at least 5 10 times in the theater and i must be 13 years right uh, and a lot of uh, uh, other films uh, which which came kaam se kaam tak that also i really like uh, and then slowly by i think you know that's early 90s is then i started realizing that i like actually a kabhi ha kabhi na more oh then probably uh, adivana or you know to wahan se thoda sa then you started I should start like up. like i really like do oh, darling ye hai which had come that time yeah. you know uh, aziz mirza uh no, no ketan mehta ketan mehta yes yes, yes. so so wahan se fir thoda sa by that time i was also i had gone to college and 17 years 16 17 and you start reading some most of another thing was i used to really uh, read film fairs a lot 
Okay. Uh, I remember from 87 के पास बात की तो मेरे पास है अभी तक काफी पंद्रह साल फिजिकल कॉपीज फाइल रीडिंग दोज देर वर दीज टर्म्स एट यू स्टार्टेड गेटिंग फेमिलियर विद अच्छा ये मेन स्ट्रीम फिल्म है कई बार उसमें वो आर्ट फिल्म में लिखा होता था पैरल सिनेमा में बोलते थे बिकॉज ऑफ द क्यूरोसिटी एंड यू लाइक द उसके बाद द वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पैक्टफुल फिल्म वुड भी जाने भी दो यार विच आई लेटेस्ट ऑन टेलीविजन देन यू एंड देट ऑल्सो लाइक फर्स्ट यू सी कभिया कभी ना देन यू ट्राई एंड लाइक यू नो कुंदन शाह अर्ली फिल्म राइट फिर वो सारा फेस शुरू हुआ जब आपको थोड़ा सा लगने लगा नहीं ये वाली फिल्में में ज्यादा मजा आ रहा है एंड देज वर दोज वर प्रॉब्लम यू नो क्रिएटिंग मोर इम्पैक्ट देर अदर स्मॉलर फिल्म विच आई हैव रियली वॉच ऑन रिपीट देर इज वन फिल्म कॉल पीछा करो आई थिंक वन ऑफ द बेस्ट कॉमेडीज मेड इन इंडिया फिल्म कॉल्ड अब आएगा मजा दीज आर पंकज पराशी क्रेजी फिल्म यू नो एंड उस टाइम वो वी एच एस मिल जाती थी अब पता नहीं फिल्म कहीं पर भी अवेलेबल नहीं होंगे अब आएगा मजा तो जहाँ तक मुझे याद है अमेजोन पे है Uh, and Picha Karo is Picha Karo I don't know Picha Karo is Ravi Baswani Satisha ah. uh, Farooq Sheikh and Amjad it's one of Are the funniest amazing. written films and Anupam Kher also do you remember who the director was yeah Pankaj Parashar well, Pankaj Parashar only yes. oh Pankaj Parashar was doing like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The he films. was great no he did Karam Chand he did this he did uh, Bhai Gamaza then eventually did Chal Baaz yeah. he had done some amazing work that time so Mukul Anand was another filmmaker who, who like in terms of impact, you know, Agni Pat really impacted me. Right. Again, I don't know was it the right age to see it because I was thirty. Yeah, 40. correct. Hum really like, I was really like, you know, Khuda Ga was another film. Hmm. So Mukul Anand's films really had a huge impact. Subhash Ghai's films had a huge impact. Hmm. Uh, Ram Lakhan, I remember going again a lot because the good thing in growing up in Baroda was you know the theaters are a lot, so you could just cycle your way up and. अहमदाबाद <laughs> slightly uh, you know other kind of cinema also which are beyond your mainstream releases earlier were of course van dam and hmm. uh, uh, bond films you know one or two i remember right and at when i started working in advertising was when you actually started realizing oh there is a hell lot of cinema you know there is european films and hmm. there are different kind of films and stuff uh, children uh, uh, majid majid film children of children of heaven children of heaven that really impacted me the first time i got a dvd and yeah. i remember the first uh, decade of the millennium a lot of us used to exchange dvds here in varsova and and there and there was this yeah. guy who was who was passed away called rajan i think he was a supplier to everyone really <laughs> yeah, i mean rajiv masan written a big post about him when he passed oh away. wow okay he was the guy to the window to all the world cinema because oh. he would get those dvds wow you know so so that's how it all started once i was here in advertising Right. Then in exactly the first three four years, I'll say two thousand to two thousand four five was when, like a real explosion happened. Of you know, this is so much of cinema there. Right, right. And and you start buying those DVDs and watching some of them. I still have. So yeah, that has been the journey. If you had to just recommend like eight to nine films, uh, that you think that people need to watch from India or I mean from India, I think you gave some really good yeah, recommendations. Yeah. Picha Gora, I don't think like even we haven't seen it. Yeah. Uh, but just uh, in general, like seven eight films that you think that everyone should watch. See, one of course is uh, the good mainstream films which are there. So I'll try and tell you some of the films which are probably not known. So uh, like Picha Gora, Abhayag, there's a there's a film called Hun Hunchi Hunchi Lal by yeah. this filmmaker called Sanjeev Shah, yeah, yeah. which I think is a great satire. You yeah. know, uh, which which one should definitely watch. uh Star- uh-huh. starring the great dilip joshi yes <laughs> so <laughs> kabhi ha kabhi nice definitely on top of uh, you know on my list uh, but again it it's known more urf professor i think if i'm getting the name correct okay. yeah sankar chidi is another good film these are the yeah. films i'm just randomly jo jo mujhe yaad aa raha hai yeah yeah uh, aur bahar se bahar se children so, of heaven you said yes that really uh, made a lot of difference uh, made a lot of impact on me then shoshan definitely made uh, again i discovered got for the way later after i read the book so Godfather. like i said you know as exposure and then got for the two and got for the three of course those three happened and stuff 
so those films had a real impact uh, amorous peros that time very early uh, that that had a huge uh, impact i really liked that parish at time was another very good anthology the short stories yeah yeah those are the thing i think i can remember now <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so we always end on this one last question which is very different from mm. all the other uh, the, the rest of our conversation and that is um, what does happiness mean to you how do you define happiness yeah i i think but the happiness is pretty much been almost the same so once i realized that now you know you can work in films and somewhere in the films and also pretty much that that was the thing where i realized that i am quite happy now okay. you know and slowly uh, you know things when they start working better if your films are doing better and all of those then it just keeps adding but pretty much i am i find this in a quite a happy zone to work in films that yeah. that's about it and basically being able to do what you love yes yes yes, yes. Yeah. also first of all for me i had a different thing you had to discover what you actually loved you know like i said i had no exposure once i realized that oh you can actually work in films and then you were able to was pretty much for me i'm that way very content about you know ki i i'm just happy working in films that's why i stayed i'm sure sir so are all of us matlab abhi to hamari sab ki journey start hi hui hai lekin Like in, uh, yeah, like uh, there's so much to learn from you, and thank hopefully you. we'll be able to incorporate in our own journeys as well. Uh, thank you. So thank you so much, Ranjan. This has been a pleasure. Same here. Yeah. And uh, and all the best for Kennedy. Uh, looking forward to the film. I mean, सब लोग यहाँ पे हम लोग अगर अगर हमारा बस चला ना हम लोग कहीं ना कहीं से कॉपी ढूंढ के सुन सुन घर ले जाएं. लेकिन लेकिन यार thank you so much again for doing this. And uh, this is Ranjan Singh. Uh, with Harshad Bansal on the Human Sonam podcast, and this is the signing off. Thank you.